All right, so what I'd like to show you today are just a few tips and tricks that I've picked up over my years of uh, game development, just to organize the way that you manage your project and to keep it clean and tidy. Uh, so let's get started. So let's start with the hierarchy. So this is only a small scene, but and there's only a few objects in it. But when, when the scene gets massive, it's uh, it gets convoluted and hard to find what you need to find. So what I'll do is I'll create a new object and I'll call this managers and I'll just zero this out. Now with managers, I'll have up the top and I'll put I'll grab like my game manager. I'd probably have a sound manager or like a board manager or, you know, whatever. And now they're all there. So then I'll create another object. And this one I will have as a divider like that. And we'll zero that one out too. And then I'll do the rest for the rest of the scene. So for example, the next one would be, I'll have a setup, which will be for my cameras and lighting and all that. I'll have a environment for the actual physical game objects that we've got there. And then I'll have, if I've got more than one canvas, I'll have a, a canvases um, object. And then I'll just duplicate that a few times. Name them the same. So let's organize this directional light events and main camera. Let's check that all in setup. Grab our objects, put that in environment, grab our canvas and put it in canvas. And then we'll just separate them with a separator objects, just so that there's a clear distinction between them. And now you know exactly where to go to grab whatever object it is you need. Next, in our project view, uh, as I said before, this is just a small project, but as you can see, I've got some scripts, scenes, models, materials, and then I've got some third-party assets here. So the first thing I'll do is as scripts is the most commonly accessed folder for me, it may not be for you, uh, but what I like to do is I like to grab my most used folder and I'll add an underscore before it. And that way it will always be at the top and I never have to scan to find where I need to go. Uh, so that's a good way to, you should always do that with your most commonly accessed folder in your project. Next, uh, I've only got two third party assets right now, but Imagine if you've got 10 or 15, it would cause a lot of uh, root level pollution there. So what I do is create a new folder and I'll call it imported assets generally. You could call it like third party assets or just third party or whatever you want to call it. And I'll just drag those in there. And that keeps them out of the of your actual game logic and, and materials and stuff, I suppose. So the next tip is being able to trigger certain events in your game as a developer uh, without having to get into your game and do them manually. So for example, if there's something you need to debug at the end of a level, you traditionally, when you're first starting out, you would get in your game and like finish the level as ridiculous as that sounds and then debug that, that problem. Or uh, for example, if you want to unlock all your skins or clear your progress or whatever, you should have an easy way as a developer to do that. So what I do, is I create a developer script. You can call it whatever you'd like. And then you don't derive from mono behavior. It's just a normal class. And you create some static methods in this class and you decorate it with the menu item attribute. And as you'll see here, I've got developer slash clear saves. So developer will be the root level object and then clear saves will be the name. And I'll show you that now. So developer, and then I've got my things here that I can click whenever I want. So for example, here, I, I'll just clear all the, all my progress in the editor, all my save games or what have you. And then here, I'll just unlock all the skins. Uh, but you could do whatever you want. For example, you could, you could grab your player and then teleport it to a certain location. You could have certain, certain, like if you've got multiple zones in your game, you could have a bunch of methods here that will warp you to all those specific zones while you're playing the game. Super handy and it will save you a ton of time. The last tip I'd like to give is just to ensure that you're using prefabs uh, as much as you can and whenever you can. So for example, I've got these three cubes here and they've all, they all share a certain attribute, which is they've all got a rotator script that I've got here on it. So when I press play, they're all rotating in the same way. Now, what if I had a hundred or a thousand of these objects in my scene and I wanted to 
speed up the way that the the way that they spin. So for example, if I just came in and I've got my orange cube selected here and I wanted to just speed it up, only that one is going to be affected. So technically what I should have done here is I should have created a prefab folder. I should have grabbed it and made it a prefab like that. And then now that I've got this prefab here, I can either duplicate it here in the scene or I can just drag them out here. Not taking time to uh, keep them all in line and stuff, but just to show you. And now, now I can simply go to one of them and I can increase the speed and then ensure that I override the changes there in my prefab menu. And now they're, they're all going. Um, well, actually, I've got them completely. Have a look what I've done there. Yeah, okay. They sometimes, sometimes the perspective looks correct, but uh, you're way off. Uh, anyway, so if you want more information about prefabs, I'll put a little annotation up here. Um, I think I'm pointing the wrong way. Yeah, no, up here, up this way. Um, so go check that out. And if you learn something from these tips, let me know and uh, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.